Do you have questions regarding what I taught you for the last 50 minutes? If not, let's uh, try to finish spherical coordinate. So usually students are having the most trouble, most problems with spherical coordinate. So by definition, right, just the, as the name implies, if we have a spherical object, what is the easiest way to define a point on that spherical surface? We can define it by a constant radius. Okay. Now, as you can see, the radius in spherical coordinate, I like to use the capitalized R letter. Okay. So, any point on a spherical surface, I can use a well-defined radius and then with the inclination angle so inclination angle is your radius to z axis okay so that is theta inclination angle i also need another angle which is identical to the cylindrical coordinate the azimuthal angle so basically, I have the radius, I have two angles, right? One angle is in this direction, another one is the angle on the x-y plane. Okay. So r, theta, and phi. Again, theta is the angle between your radius vector and the z-axis in Cartesian coordinate. But in spherical coordinate, you don't really have this Z. You don't. Okay? This is only for you to know. So later on, I will switch to this writing system or this writing system. But whenever you see this capitalized R with a hat, you know you are working in spherical coordinate system. Okay? So R, theta, phi. Oh, A R, A theta, A phi. Remember, the most important knowledge for you to understand about spherical coordinate is when your radius, where is your radius? This is your radius, right? This radius is the three-dimensional radius. But if we make a projection of that radius onto the x, y plane, you also have a radius, right? We can make that projection by this capitalized radius multiplied by sine theta, meaning you're only trying to find this radius, okay? So once you project that onto the x, y plane, this r sine theta is the not capitalized R in cylindrical coordinate. Let me use this picture okay, to better illustrate my point. This is my projected radius onto the xy plane. Okay? So basically, it is R times, this is theta, so this is R sine theta. Okay? This is R sine theta. By making this r sine theta, I know my radius on the x-y plane. Okay, why is this important? Let's continue. Differential length, again, differential length means I start with one, one point on this three-dimensional structure. How can I walk to the opposite diagonal point? In a spherical coordinate, your unit basic structure is very complicated but again we can start with one point and we add a differential radius dr right we add the differential radius dr we arrive at this point or okay we start from here we start from this point we add dr we arrive here now we want to walk to this point and then to this point 
The problem is this segment, is it a straight line or is it an arc? We're trying to change the angle by theta plus d theta, right? We're changing the angle, but because we have a radius, so basically we are spanning an arc. So again, when your unit vector is an angle, your differential length is an arc. So this arc length is r times d theta. Okay? So this is an arc. It is radius dependent. Now, what is the arc length from here to here? Because from here to here, we're changing in phi angle. Phi plus d phi. Again, we have angular unit vector, so the length span is an arc. So then you have to think, oh, what is the proper radius for this arc? Like I mentioned, this radius is r sine theta, the projected radius onto the xy plane. Right? And then we make d phi. So in essence, differential length in spherical coordinate, you have in the radius direction multiplied by the differential radius. Now you have two unit vectors that are angular. So each one would give you an arc. In the theta direction, you're using the entire three-dimensional radius to span this arc length. So this capitalized R, the radius, multiplied by D theta. But in the phi direction, in the phi direction, only the effective length projected onto the xy plane, R sine theta, is used to span this arc length. So, in the phi unit vector, even though you have a differential adenosal angle change, you're multiplying with its r sine theta. This is the smaller, not capitalized r in cylindrical coordinate. Okay. So are we clear up to now? Usually, you're most confused with spherical coordinate systems. And the reason is you don't really understand why I need to multiply this sum theta. Because we're trying to find this projection onto xy plane. Okay. So once we know differential length, we can write down differential area. Try on your own. For example, if I want to properly express this surface, in the R direction, capitalized R direction as R, in the capitalized R direction, if your surface is in the R direction, its area must be contributed from the other two differential length. And in this case, you have R d theta multiplied by r sine theta d phi. Right? The other two differential length are both arcs. So you have to properly write down their corresponding radius. And this is the radius that you used in cylindrical coordinate, r sine theta. Let's come back. This R sine theta is the non-capitalized R in cylindrical coordinate. Right? So it's quite messy, but try on your own if you understand what I'm trying to teach, what I'm trying to convey, you can get it right. Differential value, you just multiply the three. Differential length together, it's no problem.
Okay, so now, this page relies on your efforts and your devotion. This is the beginning of a successful transformation from cerebral coordinates to the other two coordinate systems. So you need to be able to convert, right, or express R, theta, phi, unit vectors using Cartesian coordinate, for example. Okay, so you need to be able to draw the relationships. Okay. So I'm leaving this page, I'm giving you the answers, but I'm leaving the works for yourselves. Okay, so let's not occupy the time of the classroom. Position transformation is also straightforward, so I, I'll just go over the results. Okay? So if you have a position which is given in spherical coordinate, you can transform it into Cartesian coordinate x, y, z, because we know that x, this is the point again, this position on a spherical surface if you want to find its x and y value, you first need to perform the projection onto the x-y plane, right? And I mentioned this over and over. When you do this projection, you're trying to find this green radius, not capitalized R, which equals to capitalized R times sine theta. So once you have this R value identical to the symmetric coordinate, everything is similar to the symmetric coordinate. Okay? So this is what you have. So once you have this, you are free to convert from spherical coordinate into Cartesian coordinate. And likewise, you can do the same thing. So this is straightforward. I'm leaving the contents for you to verify on your own. Again, vector. If you can convert for positions, you need to be able to convert for vectors. And you are using the same steps. A given vector can be expressed in Cartesian form or in spherical coordinate form. If you already know its Cartesian components, you can extract the spherical co coordinate components by the same methodology I just taught you. You just make the dot product of the entire vector with some unit vector in the new coordinate system. Okay? And based on the knowledge, I just wrote down for you in the previous slides, right? A R, A theta, A phi can all be expressed by unit vectors in other coordinate systems. Here, A R, A theta, A phi can be properly formulated by the unit vectors in the Cartesian coordinate. So once you know this, Basically, the transformation is straightforward. Okay? So I'm leaving this page for you to work on your own. Uh, if required, uh, if a lot of students ask, I, I will have the TA to really walk you over this transformation for you. Of course, online, use the screen view. The TA is very angry now. <laughs> so in essence, what I taught you up to now is nothing more than trying to emphasize the differential length for an angular unit vector is an arc, right? You see this over and over. So the differential length in a generalized form, dl is in the first unit vector direction with the first 
differential value multiplied by, this is known as Jacobian in your past, right? You, you all passed engineering math and you all learned Jacobians. Jacobians for Cartesian coordinate, you're very lucky, 1, 1, 1. Symmetrical coordinate, you have one Jacobian. Why? Because in this degree, phi is angular. So your differential length is an arc. You have to multiply this by d phi. Okay? Sprinkle coordinate, unfortunately, your second coordinate is theta, angular. Third one, phi, is also angular. So you need to take their effective radius into consideration. The first one in the theta direction, for the r in the phi direction, we're making a projection onto the xy plane. So on the r sine theta, not entirely r, only the sine theta component contribution. Okay. But let me emphasize again and again this capitalized R projected onto the XY plane, the effective radius is equal to the non capitalized R in the cylindrical coordinate. Okay. So, differential area, generalized form, you always have this Jacobian. Differential value, in that form. So what have we learned? What have I taught you? Understanding differential length for all three orthogonal coordinate system is extremely important. When your unit vector is an angle, your span differential length is an arc. So you need to properly multiply that differential amount by its radius. So this will be used for gradient, will be used for divergence, it will be used for curl. All right, so are we clear up to now? Do we have questions? If not, let's go to the next PowerPoint set. Okay, so we'll take a moment.